Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Monday, April 6, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here are tonight's top stories. Tonight, how hurting feelings on Facebook could land you in the slammer. Then, Snowden says don't be spooked by the NSA and the underbelly of Jade Helm. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. <laughs> belly of the beast, 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 yeah! <laughs> The NSA has the greatest surveillance capabilities uh, that we've ever seen in history. Now, what they will argue is that they don't uh, use this for nefarious purposes uh, against American citizens. But the real problem is that they're using these capabilities to make us vulnerable to them and then saying, well, I have a gun pointed at your head. I'm not going to pull the trigger. Trust me. That was Edward Snowden speaking with HBO comedian John Oliver. He traveled to Russia last week to speak with Snowden primarily about a Section 215 of the Patriot Act and the fact that this is set to expire June 1st. Now, just a little refresher, what is Section 215? Section 215 allows the FBI to order any person or entity to turn over any tangible things so long as the FBI specifies that the order is for an authorized investigation, it's to protect against international terrorism or clandestine intelligence activities. Section 215 vastly expands the FBI's power to spy on ordinary people living in the United States. So simply, it takes away a lot of our freedoms without offering us any real security in return. Now, Snowden also warned to John Oliver that while some NSA programs are helpful to the country's intelligence officials, spying has started to come against American citizens themselves in wide-ranging domestic surveillance. And really, it was kind of funny because the only way that John Oliver could get it across to his audience was he took to the streets to let people know that the NSA was collecting their nude photographs. Now, prior to telling them this, people, they didn't really care who the NSA was. They didn't have any idea who Edward Snowden was. But as soon as they realized just what was happening with some of their personal information or personal pictures, then they were all outraged about it, probably feigning outrage. We'll see if they actually call their Congress people or something to let them know they're you know, they want to repeal <laughs> the Patriot Act. But Snowden says that even if they are collecting your nudie photos and passing them around throughout the office, Americans shouldn't curb their use of the Internet just so they can avoid having these intimate pictures and all their personal information shared and intercepted by the NSA. He says, if we sacrifice our values because we're afraid then we don't care about those values very much in the first place. So, and that's absolutely right. They want us to lock down the internet, lock down our use of the internet uh, out of fear and fear that Big Brother is always watching. It's just like 1984, Big Brother is always watching. So be careful what you say, be careful what you do. And I even found myself for many years uh, being really careful about the things that I searched online because I didn't want to be put on some red or blue list and, you know, be one of these people that's going to get picked up during the Jade Helm military exercises. But that's exactly what they want us to do. They want to control us so that we don't go to the Internet to, to wake people up, to get real information that we're not getting from the mainstream media. And so that's absolutely why we all should push back against this Look up whatever we want to, share it with our friends, be sure to share all of InfoWars articles and stories with your friends, and 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 continue waking people up, because that's the big issue they're having, is that the internet is waking people up beyond the control of the controllers. And so, of course, they just want to let us know Big Brother's watching. So what? Who cares? Share the nudie pics. Now, news without action is just voyeurism, so here's what you can do to help. Now, this is the Electronic Frontier Foundation. They're always doing really great work, but they're making it very easy for you. You can follow the link that's provided in this video. Uh, they say, let your Congress know that a vote to reauthorize Section 215 is a vote against the Constitution. Email your representatives, call them, and tell Congress to take a stand. 
So we do have a little time uh, to really harass and annoy our Congress, our representatives, and let them know that we're really concerned about this, and we specifically uh, want a little bit of NSA reform, or a lot of NSA reform. Now, speaking of the way we use the internet and maybe curbing how we do that, a top cop is now insinuating that just insulting someone on Facebook can get you arrested. This is a police representative. He warned that Americans could be arrested for bad language or insulting someone on Facebook after a woman was charged with harassment by computer for posting a selfie of herself holding a gun. Now, this is a 26-year-old woman, Kristen Holmes. She got into a Facebook argument when a woman had mistaken her for someone else, and so she took a picture of herself brushing her teeth and holding a gun, taking a selfie, and she said, I'll post a few actual pics of me so you know the difference when you come and find me. And she said it kind of Funny, she called herself Facebook thugging, and she said, don't do it, it'll get you arrested. But now Holmes is facing up to one year in prison and a $2,500 fine for posting this photo that she she took down after she realized it was kind of threatening, a little bit intimidating, she said she took it down. Uh, but she says, it wasn't a threat. I thought it was a funny picture. What happened to freedom of speech? But the president of the Virginia Fraternal Order of Police says that free speech doesn't say you have the right to insult somebody. Oh, unfortunately, yes, it does. Uh, but he said that using bad language online should also be considered a crime. He said it's actually against the law to say it in public. It's a part of the disorderly conduct statute. If it's against the law to say it in public, why wouldn't it be against the law to say it to someone through a computer? So now here we have a top cop talking about arresting people for using profanity online. So that is quite insane. Big Brother, totalitarian. Uh, they they want to be able to control every aspect of your life, tightly monitor and control it. Uh, that's the only way the government can grow. They don't actually do anything. The only way they can grow is by enacting bizarre regulations against the public. Against the public. So here we have another story. A Texas man is now serving 17 days in jail because he had an overgrown lawn. This was the option he he opted for. This is Rick Yos. He's an electrician for Tarrant County College. He routinely works long hours. He just turned himself into custody on Saturday because he lacked the funds to pay a $1,700 fine that he received over his yard. He said that's the equivalent of three months three mortgage payments for him. So he said it got overgrown because he was working a lot of hours. They were really busy. As soon as the city sent a warning, they handled it. They mowed the lawn and they continued to keep it mowed, but that wasn't enough for the city. They issued a warrant for Yoz's arrest and a $1,700 fine. Now, in that article, there is a video of Alex Jones, baby Alex Jones uh, from the archives, where he is interviewing Roland Ellingson, who was uh, being threatened with fines over an overgrown lawn as well here in Austin. And they were threatening him with fines of up to $2,000 a day. So Alex went to one of the city council members' homes uh, just down the street from Mr. Ellingson. And that city council member actually owned two homes on that street. And her yard was completely overgrown. There were holes in the roof, a tarp over the roof at one of her rental homes. But of course, no fines for that city council member. And that's what this is all about. It's not, it's not to regulate everyone. It's not to save the entire earth. It's about controlling the people who don't have enough money to push back. Now, we're also seeing this in California. They're experiencing a historical drought right now. And so the governor has just announced that he's going to start levying heavy fines for people who take too long of showers. $500 a day for people who are found to be taking a little bit too long in the shower. Now, obviously, they're going to be able to track that because of all of those mandatory smart meters that they were installing all over the state. But now a lot of California residents are pointing out the hypocrisy in this, uh, saying if you go to an affluent neighborhood in Beverly Hills, it doesn't even seem like there is a drought at all. There doesn't seem to be any sort of a drought because people are still um, watering their lawns and the golf courses are still really green. And they're also pointing out that these neighborhoods use far more water per capita than less wealthy communities, specific uh, 150 gallons of water 
per capita in places like Beverly Hills, whereas it's less than 45 per capita in these lower income communities. So you see how they're using so much more water, but they're not gonna get levied. They're not gonna get these huge fines, just like Nestle is going to scoop up all the water that's there and continue selling this bottled water, $10 a gallon, while there is a historical drought. So it's not about controlling this and, and saving the world. It's about rules and regulations for those who can't buy their way out of them. So now we're seeing you know, we can't cuss online. The definition of free speech and freedom of religion is a little bit fuzzy now in this United States of totalitarianism. Uh, we've reported before people who simply questioned the official story of 9-11 were kidnapped by the FBI and thrown into mental institution because they were sharing too many stories on Facebook questioning the official story of 9-11. And now we're actually being sent in reports uh, from some of our listeners, the National Guard is being called up in places like Michigan and Florida to do these uh, tr test military trials of rounding up dissidents. So that is a huge concern because here they're kind of setting the agenda of this is what you can do, this is what you can't do. Big Brother is always watching you. And now we're going to go and start doing our military training exercises right on the street. You can see us rounding up dissidents. And that is a big concern. Coming up right after this break, we are going to be playing a special report from John Bowne. Uh, it's a precursor to this Jade Helm military exercise. It's why you should be so concerned with everything that's going on, with all this totalitarianism, authoritarianism that is coming down from all sectors. It's called the Phoenix Program. And the thing that was so concerning with that is that it targeted civilians, not soldiers. InfoWars Life and InfoWarsLife.com is extremely excited to announce our latest release, Winter Sun, a revolutionary type of vitamin D3. Winter Sun is a premium quality vitamin D3 nutritional supplement. It is produced by extracting oil from healthy, nutrient-dense plants known as lichens. Every batch is analyzed for purity and D3 content. It's completely free of toxins and allergens. Simply put, if you want the best at an extremely low price, this is it. Winter Sun is the result of our pursuit of the best source of vitamin D3. The research and development took over two years, but the result, as verified by independent laboratories, is the best vegan vitamin D3 product in the world. Read the facts at InfoWarsLife.com about Winter Sun Vitamin D3. Not only does vitamin D3 promote a healthy mood, but vitamin D supports our memory and brain function, something the globalists are targeting. Visit InfoWars.com today or call 888-253-3139. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. Good evening, my fellow Americans. Over the past several weeks, you have heard a number of reports on TV, radio, and in your newspapers on the situation in Southeast Asia. I think the time has come for me as president and as commander in chief of our armed forces to put these reports in perspective. Tactics used during the Vietnam War by the CIA and the military eerily echo the current establishment's buildup of Stasi style homeland security and that their declaration that the greatest threat to national security is sovereign patriotic citizens, not the thousands of criminals crossing our southern border murdering and raping American citizens, not the Islamic terrorist organizations that have been embedded in the United States for decades. Among those variety of reasons, radical Islam might have been one of the reasons uh, that the individuals took the steps that they did. 
We see, you say, radical Islam. I mean, I think those people who it's, espouse a, a version of Islam that is not are you, are you uncomfortable attributing any of their actions to radical Islam? It sounds like no, it. No, I don't want to say anything negative about a religion that is no, no, not No, no, I'm not talking a, about a religion. Man like I'm talking about radical Islam. I'm not talking about the general religion. No, real constitution-loving apple pie-eating Americans are the number one threat to their own country. And two plus two equals five. How and why is that declaration even rational? Vietnam, 1965 to 1972, the Phoenix Program, a CIA-designed and coordinated infiltration of the political infrastructure of the National Liberation Front of South Vietnam, aka the Viet Cong Communist Army. Force must often precede reason, and the waste of war, the works of peace. The CIA had been covertly infiltrating Viet Cong strongholds to seek out names on their kill list. One of the tactics included parading innocent Vietnamese citizens around their village with a bag over their head and a leash around their neck, terrorizing all of the residents. The Vietnamese citizen on the leash would then be instructed to indicate which house the Viet Cong informer might live. The next day, the CIA's provincial reconnaissance units would kick the door down and kill everyone inside women and children included. The CIA's PRU would haul the Viet Cong off to regional interrogation centers where they would be tortured to extract information for the commanding officers, and then the whole process would be repeated. The Phoenix program neutralized 81,740 Viet Cong operatives, killing between 26,000 and 41,000 of them. Peter De Silva, the CIA's station chief, developed the strategy known as counter-terror the use of terrorism as a legitimate tool to use in unconventional warfare. De Silva strategically applied the counter-terror to unsuspecting, quote, enemy civilians, unquote. Historian Douglas Valentine noted in his important work, The Phoenix Program, that central to Phoenix is the fact that it targeted civilians, not soldiers. Innocent victims of Castro's rounding up of 200,000 citizens during the CIA's Bay of Pigs invasion can't help but see the implications of similar operations inside the United States. After witnessing troops training to intern citizens in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, the upcoming Jade Helm operation from July through September of 2015 states that troops will operate undetected amongst civilian populations to see if they can infiltrate without being noticed. With martial law plans that have been in place for decades, the globalist bankers that control our government see the CIA's approach in Vietnam as a benchmark in undermining U.S. sovereignty. In just 14 years since 9-11, unleashing a degradation in the American Bill of Rights never before seen in our 239-year history. The fall of Saigon in 1975 marked the end of the Vietnam War. Communism won, and the Socialist Republic of Vietnam was born. The CIA lost the Vietnam War by targeting the citizenry. With the Jade Helm operations gearing up for the summer of 2015, treason's seat at the Table of Liberty just got a whole lot bigger. John Bound for Infowars.com. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients. 
fruits extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules, you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue. Wild crafted from the Mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire. This winter season, it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano. Now available in our limited first run at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. This is the new face of evil. This is what nightmares are made of. Ruthless, cold-blooded killers on a mission to wage war, to annihilate millions of people. We are their enemy, and they will stop at nothing to destroy us. All measures should be taken in our defense, that always will we remember the character of the onslaught against us. I think it's impossible to say that the Syrian rebels are not associated with Al-Qaeda. So there is a great irony that you will be arming forces that a, a normal common sense use of the word associated can say that these people are associated with Al-Qaeda. But you watch in typical NATO US false flag fashion, the Assad regime is going to be blamed or accused of using chemical weapons against the so-called rebels. There's a global crime syndicate that controls NATO and the major Western governments, and it is using Al-Qaeda to overthrow secular governments. Breaking news now from the war in Syria, and this could be significant. Reports that chemical weapons have been used in that conflict. These are some of the scenes now circulating on the internet of distressed children apparently suffering the after effects of a chemical attack. Some of the video footage is too distressing to broadcast, and it is unverified. But there are scores of dead, among them very young children. Good afternoon, everybody. Ten days ago, the world watched in horror as men, women, and children were massacred in Syria in the worst chemical weapons attack of the 21st century. The Assad regime, and only undeniably the Assad regime, unleashed an outrageous chemical attack against its own citizens. After, After careful, careful deliberation, deliberation, I have decided, decided that, that the United, United States, States should take military, military action, action against Syrian regime targets. We can tell you beyond any reasonable doubt that our evidence proves the Assad regime prepared for this attack. I've watched debates in Congress. A congressman asked Mr. Kerry, is there al-Qaeda? People say they've gotten stronger. He says, no, I say officially, they aren't there. The main combat unit, the so-called Al-Nursa, is a unit of Al-Qaeda. They know about this. It's not pleasant for me to see this. 
Well, we communicate with them and assume that they are decent people. He lies openly and he knows that he lies. We're not really positive who, uh, who set off the gas. I mean, the, per the group that's most likely to benefit from that is Al-Qaeda. Did President Bashir Assad gas his own people? Not according to a growing number of skeptics, including Alex Jones, syndicated radio talk show host. I don't know who launched the chemical attack, but all the evidence leans towards the rebels having the motive to do it. And the Russians have put out a new report saying they have proof the rebels did it back in March of this year. Some people here and there amazingly have questioned the evidence of this assault on conscience. I repeat here again today that only the most willful desire to avoid reality can assert that this did not occur as described or that the regime did not do it. All right, so what kind of proof is there that the rebels would do this? I mean, the rebels supposedly are supporting the people of Syria. They would actually sacrifice their own people in order to draw America into this war to start World War III? Well, look, uh, the, the rebels are made up of jihadis, al-Qaeda, and some domestic Syrians, but around 60%, many studies show, are al-Qaeda, are jihadis. They've been wiping out whole Christian villages. So the, I don't think the rebels represent the Syrian people. I believe you will not deny the fact that uh, one hardly should back those who kills their enemies and... Uh, now eat their organs uh, and all that is filmed and shot. Do you want to support these people? Do you want to supply arms to these people? There's a growing volume of new evidence from numerous sources in the Middle East, mostly affiliated with the Syrian opposition and its sponsors and supporters, which makes a very strong case based on solid circumstantial evidence that the August 21st, 2013 chemical strike in the Damascus suburbs was indeed a premeditated provocation. I would not understand or comprehend that Bashar al-Assad, no matter how bad a man he may be, would be so stupid as to order a chemical weapons attack on civilians in his own country, when the immediate consequence of which might be that he would be at war with the United States. So we could be looking here at, at, a, at a frame job. Available data puts the horror in a different and disturbing light, meaning it's not Basher doing the horrible things. It's the rebels nerve gassing themselves, framing Basher, setting him up so that the Al-Qaeda guys win and then we end up on the side of Al-Qaeda. And you've heard that. So this reeks of a false flag operation. I can't see fighting to impose Sharia law in, in Syria. I also can't see sending my son to fight with Islamic rebels against Christians. I also can't see my son going to fight with Al on the same side as Al-Qaeda. We should be focused on defending the United States of America. That's right. why young men and women sign up to join the military, not to, to as, as you know, uh, you know, serve, serve as Al-Qaeda Air Force. You've seen what they're capable of doing. I mean, the internet is flooded with videos of their drive-by shootings and beheadings. They are an army of psychopaths, and they've been placed on the grand chessboard for a reason. ISIS didn't happen by accident, and they're not just some blowback of U.S. foreign policy. No, this was intentional. This is a Frankenstein created by U.S. and Saudi intelligence.
They're there to destabilize the region. They've become very useful so far, basically doing Washington's dirty work. Right now, ISIS controls about 35% of Syria. All they need is a little more territory, a few more Christian beheadings, and it's on. The U.S. will finally have an excuse to invade. And this, my friends, this has been their plan all along. A seven-hour-long debate in the British Parliament has culminated in a landslide approval of UK strikes on Islamic State positions in Iraq. All three major parties backing the initiative. The bombings could be unleashed any moment now. As of today, there's a new battle that has begun against ISIS trying to recapture Saddam Hussein's hometown of Tikrit. The town of al-Baghdadi falling into the hands of ISIS as the Iraqi army evaporates. ISIS is also fighting to keep territory in Iraq. Tonight, a fierce battle continues for Saddam Hussein's hometown of Tikrit. Iraqi forces hope to seize it to use as a base for eventually retaking the city of Mosul. This as the terror group gains ground in Anbar province, some predicting a collapse of the area within hours. In a new, slickly produced video, ISIS claims its militants are still on the streets of Tikrit, confidently fighting off the assault by Iraqi forces. On the global map, you see ISIS spreading the places like Algeria and Libya, uh, into the Far East and Indonesia and the Philippines as well. This is radical Islamic Jihad making war on Western civilization. Once again, the world is standing by doing little while the ISIS menace grows, spreading all over the Middle East and North Africa. I am concerned about this report about Syrian rebels and the ceasefire with ISIS. Uh, Senator but Paul, that's not true. Well, it's not true. Uh, it's you not to read true. The, uh, Weather? I don't care about the report. I know these people intimately. We talk to them all the time. Tutnova says people living in ISIS-controlled areas are in fear of the harsh penalties for infringement of the stringent laws. The Islamic State terror group has reportedly executed a hundred of its own foreign fighters who tried to flee their headquarters in the Syrian city of Raqqa. We're here in the 17th Division military base just outside the city of Raqqa and we're here with the soldiers of Bashar. You can see them now digging their own graves in the very place where they were stationed. Can ISIS be defeated in this battle here? That's the big question mark. And if ISIS can't be defeated, having taken this fight now to back to ISIS, and if the Iraqi military is unsuccessful, then I think you have to look at a very different map in the Middle East. Fighters say they often manage to defeat much larger armies Iraqi military because they're not afraid to die. Al-Qaeda in Iraq four years ago was allowed to set up bases in the west of Iraq and invade eastern Syria. They started the civil war four years ago in Syria. They were given massive funding. They're 65 percent, according to NATO, of the rebel force. The Council on Foreign Relations last year had the headline, Why We Need Al-Qaeda, and they said give them air support to take over the country and we'll remove them later. Bull. Since the capture and execution of Saddam Hussein, there's been death, chaos, tremendous instability in the region, and worst of all, the emergence of ISIS. The people we are fighting today, we funded 20 years ago. <laughs> ISIS looks like it, in fact, can capture and hold territory. And that is their whole goal, to continue to expand throughout the region. The White House, armed, funded, militarily aided, and gave political office to the guy now leading ISIS terrorists in Libya. I don't care about the report. I know these people intimately. We talk to them all the time. Abdel Hakim Belhaj, seen here meeting with Senators John McCain and Lindsey Graham was the emir of the Libyan Islamic fighting group, LIFG, an organization affiliated with Al-Qaeda and the Taliban, which killed US troops in Iraq and Afghanistan. I know these people. I'm in contact with them all the time. We know the United States arms, trains, and funds ISIS. Is the US involved with any uh, procuring of weapons, transfer of weapons, buying, selling, anyhow transferring weapons to Turkey out of Libya? 
to Turkey? How about we find out why the hell ISIS keeps receiving these accidental airdrops of weapons caches from British and American planes? Let's cut the bullshit. The war on terror is a total fraud. How about you stop arming and funding fucking bloodthirsty terrorists in the first place? ISIS is a Frankenstein that was created by the CIA, Mossad, MI6, even the Pakistani ISI, if you want to trace it all the way back to Al Qaeda. The Islamic State continues to butcher Christians and Muslims across the region. And all because our governments supported these subhuman scumbags from the very beginning. Bottom line, how do we kill ISIS? I mean, it's really easy. All you have to do is stop funding them. The Obama administration simply has to stop funding ISIS and stop doing these accidental airdrops with supplies to ISIS. Cut the snake off at the head. The regime change begins at home. Exactly. This is the new face of evil. This is what nightmares are made of. Ruthless, cold-blooded killers on a mission to wage war, to annihilate millions of people. We are their enemy, and they will stop at nothing to destroy us. All measures should be taken in our defense, that always will we remember the character of the onslaught against us. Well, thank you for tuning in to the show tonight. I want to give a shout out and a happy birthday to my dad. Now, if you are watching us on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. It surely helps us out here and you can share all of our videos with your friends and your subscribers. And then you can also become a subscriber to prisonplanet.tv. You can share your username and password with up to 20 people at the same time. It's insane. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you here tomorrow, 7 p.m. Central. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.